17 U.S.C. 107 federal law allows citizens to use copyrighted media for fair use. That is criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody. Kuma, Yahawa, we are put to you there, sir. We are used to me for me, sir. You can make Hydrogels and hand sanitizers are made from graphene, which is what is in. Interesting that Purell has the word Purell in it. And angel has the word gel in it. L means angel. Gel means gel. Pure rel. Pure fallen angel. Every time I would use it, I would just be like, there's something wrong with this. Yeah. Um, so it's hand sanitizer, a hydrogel. Hydrogel sanitizing hand rubs can be formulated from natural semi or synthetic polymeric materials which allow an increased product performance at the hand skin level, carrying out a more prolonged antimicrobial activity. Hydrogel is a three-dimensional 3D network of hydrophilic polymers that can swell in water and hold a large amount of water while maintaining the structure due to the chemical or physical cross-linking polymer chains. So should you use hand sanitizer? Because when you watch Poltergeist the movie, that's what they're dealing with. When you watch um, Terminator, yeah, right. what does he take form out of and become metal? It's like a gel. So we see the twinning everywhere. He takes on everyone's identities everywhere. The disinfectant hydrogel. Okay, this is an alcohol-based hydrogel. We use our nanotechnology grade laboratories to assure quality and traceability. What are you trying to track and trace? The company's name is Graphenia. It says it does not contain graphene. Hydrogel does not. But then when you look at all the other sites that talk about what it's made of, graphene, it says applications of graphene based composite hydrogels, a review, and this is from the Chinese. And so they're using it for wastewater treatment, biosensor technology. I mean, why would they call it graph graphene, the company? <laughs> they're like, they're not using it. And then it says graphene based hydrogels, various applications of the graphene based hydrogels are, are revealed em emphatically, <laughs> such as absorbents for purification, absorbents for specific dye stops and biosensors with high energy density. Terminator, what does he take form out of and become metal? It's like a gel, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that was the association I had too. I was like, okay. that stuff is a gel-like material. They use them for contact lenses. The black blue substance was seen during the introduction of the movie Prometheus. The Whaley Newtani Corporation has some information on the chemical, but through various personnel that have been infected by this agent, we can see the effects through various forms of contamination. This liquid is also known as agent or chemical A0 3959X.91 15. Now, during the introduction to Prometheus, an engineer was sacrificed in order to spread its genetic makeup on a planet which eventually led to other life forms being created. During this event, the black goo was ingested and it immediately started to affect the host, breaking down its cells until the body shattered and fell apart. This happened very quickly and when compared to other forms of infection, various types of effects can happen over the time of exposure. Now the ingestion effects can happen immediately or up to an hour which can result in rapid heart rates. Up to eight hours later, the host might experience the effects of paranoia, delirium, and sexual arousal. From up to 18 hours later, the host might be naturally unable to give birth. The genetic makeup of the trilobite still affected her reproductive ability to give birth. This resulted in a new life form that grew to an enormous size that eventually killed the engineer by impregnating it with the Deacon alien embryo. 
Now, the Blaku has been noted to be unstable in ambient temperature, but is controlled within a steatite ampule. This then acts as an enclosed environment for the agent to remain active, but not to cause contamination until the glass is broken. The jelly that uh, Carol Ann is covered in, the jelly that the Terminator and Reese, sometimes you see on them when they travel from the future to now, you could kind of say like her coming from the astral plane back to the physical plane and them coming from the future back to the to the past is kind of like a type of uh you, dimension uh -huh. travel and that jelly around them could almost be like a type of um conductor conductor you know? okay and let me read and this and hold your silicone remember silicone also they can uh they can they can get through a through a shot back in 2015 this video came from they can get through a shot gold to wrap around your helix of your dna and silicone they were using those as pairs. If you look at it, both of those, gold is conductor, is a conductor, right? For you could say for hardware. Silicone is a conductor for software. So it's kind of it's much more, I don't know it how is, to put it, but it would be this more might be mind. both. Like let, let me read this introduction. In recent years, various kinds of carbon nanostructure materials have raised general interest among researchers from different fields. Graphene as a representative two-dimensional layered material has already tr attracted global attention for applications in sensors, cat catalysts, environmental fields due to high thermal conductivity, transmittance, electrical conductivity. As a result, graphene has played a crucial role in manufacturing multifunctional graphene-based composites due to their encouraging characteristics. Therefore, graphene and its functionalized derivatives can be used as outstanding building blocks for self-assembly of functional carbon-based materials due to unique two-dimensional structures, such as 3D graphene films and 3D graphene polymer composites. So these things, what they're saying is that they build a mean, they build a twin. Like, remember how we were just talking now, guys, about the twinning? Mm -hmm. They build a twin host inside of you with this graphene technology. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. And they were talking about it on StopTheCrime.net. There was this girl with a blood type O who had been kidnapped by the aliens a lot. And she was saying that she was losing all of her memory she was losing her identity and that she had these composites in her. And she said she felt that she had a composite twin built up inside of her. This is very much like the movie Annihilation in which Natalie Portman is invaded by, you see the spike proteins on that cell and invaded by this blood and this creature built up inside of her, which annihilates her identity and mimics her perfectly. And you see the graphene type texture of the body there it is pressing in on her imitating her every move and taking over her identity this is the same conductive substance that allows those dwelling in other dimensions or heavenly realms pushed to the outer realm can then come in and demonically possess a person and so the dead body is united to the living So it's like that what that does, what that reminds me of is uh, how Stephen Darby was talking about um, blood, especially spilled blood uh, of the uh, spilled blood. So blood like spilled on purpose in, 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 an, in an evil or, or harmful way, especially if it's innocent blood, that blood becomes like the, the scripture says, the ground that has and absorbs innocent blood and bloodshed is cursed. And the only thing that will fix it is the spilled blood of whoever it is that spilled the blood. And he was saying that that's in scripture. He was saying metaphysically spilled blood on the earth becomes a portal for wicked spirits to enter the earth or at least have some sort of a dominion and domain and power and influence wherever that spilled blood is, is basically like their portal. This is what may be offered as a potential solution and healing for the problem of myocarditis and Alzheimer's problem reaction solution. You become a zombie. Adrenochrome. Its chemical structure is the shape of a rabbit and it is produced naturally by our bodies. It is a chemical compound produced by the oxidation of adrenaline. 
Children produce the purest form of adrenochrome when exposed to high amounts of fear. It is an anti-aging serum. To notice that blood specific means that young blood cells secrete some molecule or protein that helps heal the body and keeps it young. And as an organism ages, they lose the ability to make this molecule. Previously, it was thought that GDF11, a molecule that circulates throughout the blood, was the fountain of youth. This new study, published in the journal Cell Metabolism, found that as mice aged, the more of this molecule circulated in their bloodstream. Other studies show that there is really something powerful about young blood. Other studies, like one published in journal Nature Medicine, found that young blood recharged the brains of older mice. In a similar Frankensteinian experiment, researchers stitched together older mice with a young mouse. They found that the young mouse blood rejuvenated the hearts of older mice. The older mice suffered from cardiac hypertrophy, a condition which thickens and swells the heart. After just four weeks of getting young blood from the other mouse, their heart shrank to a normal size. All of these studies sure make you want to drink a nice tall glass of young blood, eh? This is what you look like on adrenochrome, and this is what you look like without it. So everyone's being initiated into masonry or basically Satanism because the life is in the blood. So you'll be drinking it to cure Alzheimer's or the heart problem created by the jab or you'll be drained of it by the serpents in your blood. So it seems like you become an offering, a sacrifice for whatever is building up inside of you, it drains your life force and your blood. The final battle which would be called Armageddon, which would be in the Valley of Megiddo, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and also in Jerusalem. Not just one battle, but it would be a battlefield, if we would think of it perhaps more precisely. And he goes on to say, Eusebius locates the Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Hinnom Valley, the scene of child sacrifice by Ahaz and Manasseh, the Lord had promised to deal out death in the Valley of Slaughter. And we're going to see that this valley, it not only is the scene of the vision of Enoch in chapter 53, but it was called by different names uh, in different places in Scripture. In Isaiah 30, 33, For Tophet is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared, he hath made it deep and large. The pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breadth of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. And this valley of Jehoshaphat, also called the Valley of Hinnom, this is where the word for the lake of fire, Gehinnom, takes its name. And this was the place where they would burn the children in the fire to Moloch. And this is the way the Lord does things in the very place where this evil against the children was perpetuated. This is where the Lord is going to gather people together for the final judgment. And also we're going to be getting a glimpse of those that have already passed into judgment in this valley that Enoch is seeing a vision of. He said, There mine eyes saw a deep valley with open mouths. And all who dwell on the earth and sea and islands shall bring to him gifts and presents and tokens of homage, but that deep valley shall not become full. Plenty of room for everybody uh, that wants to go to hell. It's a broad road and uh, sad to say uh, there's plenty of room there. But what we want to zero in on here is the deep valley with open mouths. Now this phrase is very, very significant and as we key in on this, it's going to unpack an amazing revelation of that which is here in the book of Enoch. Now, I want to read from a book called Egyptian Magic by E. Wallace Budge and when there were people there with open mouths, there is a specific Egyptian ritual in the Egyptian Book of the Dead called the opening of the mouth. 
And in our ride tonight, it says the chapter of the opening of the mouth of the statue of Osiris. And the way that this ritual was worked, they would take a statue that was representative of the person that had died and was going through the process of mummification. And there was a relationship in sim, sim, uh, sympathetic magic between the soul of the individual and the statue. And it says here, the performance of the ceremony of the opening of the mouth was followed by a number of other less important ceremonies which had for their object the providing of the mummy or statue with scents and unguents and various articles. And as they did the ritual on the statue, this was, it was believed that it would enable the soul of the dead person to be empowered after death. And there's a relationship here that we're not going to go down this one tonight, but in the book of Revelation, it says of the first beast of Revelation 13 that he was able to make the image of the beast both to talk and to speak. And there's a lot of things in the in the black arts which deal with the animation of statues and these type of things. But Besides the direct application of graphene sheets still suffer from poor stability. Therefore, public attention is thoroughly aroused as to the modified graphene nanomaterials, which including chemically chemical modified and functionalized graphene, among them graphene oxide, has been more frequently studied due to the abundant functional groups and excellent hydrophile. And this is what you were talking about when you were talking about the gold, the gold being a hardware element that could potentially come in the mark to unify the, the pieces. And we had a rhema word about the mRNA not being the mark, but being part of a triune or trifecta in the way that we, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Yahuwah, Yahusha, and the Ruach HaKodesh. They find that stability is obtained the following This way. speaks to the reason for the chip, and this speaks, speaks again to Yah's triune order, always superseding everything, and so Satan has to use it also. And that's why the mark is, you are forced to put it in your forehead and in your hand, and you have to take on the name of the enemy. The hydrogel is unstable, but when there are three reactants involved, three elements, then it is stabilized. Eventually, geo is obtained after experiencing three reaction stages of low, middle, and high temperature in order. A kind of 3D macroscopic structure, hydrogels are consistent of the loose porous network, which possess huge potentials in electrochemical materials, catalysts, sensor, and water treatment. And what are we made of? What is our primary composition? Water. What this is leading me to wonder, and I don't fully understand this, so if somebody is, is understanding it better than me, tell me, because you can read it in front of you. But I still think there's going to be one last element to introduce because of the stability factor. They say that this other one is more stable. This is not enough. I mean, I haven't studied this in no way, but I, I, I did glance at it and, um, because I was concerned about the hydrogels and because of those two movies. Um, look, it says additives for delivering or controlling and releasing of drugs in the body. pH controlled selective drug release. See, I think what's going to happen is that when they introduce this mark, it may have more control over you so that they can actually possibly, and tell me what you guys think, threaten people and go, look, you're not, there's a new plague coming out. Or now you're now you're chained to us. You see how everyone else was dying. Yeah. We have codes that we can program into you to prevent you from dying from this specific disease. But you have to take this mark of next level slavery. Slavery, because look, it's working for everyone else. Now that we've got you hooked, because a lot of people are having heart problems or neurological problems, because these are the main functioning. 
organs and it's respiratory. So what are these connected to? So yeah, changes our heart. That's where the blood is. The life is in the blood. So that's connected to your soul. So your soul is being manipulated by this stuff, and, right? And both of those organs you just mentioned are probably the two most, if I'm wrong, somebody tell me, but like off the top of my head, your brain and your heart are the two that can actually generate a charge, an electromagnetic yeah. charge in the blood and as well as like neuronal firing and transmission, all of the things that the body uh, does, like all the organ function, everything, the brain is telling all these organs to do that via neurotransmitter. So that's basically like an electronic circuitry, an electromagnetic circuitry right yes. down there. And the heart is also charging the blood because of the pump, you know. So you it's almost like a defibrillator. It works very very similarly like a like a defibr defibrillator. So you got that charge from both of those organs. And if that's what you're getting is myocarditis, uh, you know, like infecting the the muscle wall inside the heart, eating away at it in a in a very um yeah what is it not acute but chronic it's gra it's gradual but it's consistent it, it keeps going yeah so this is in the exact same way that this when you look at the black goo with the magnet you're the positive charge it's the black negative charge like the sun and the moon this is why this the moon is slower than the sun it gets charged up by the sun then it loses its charge and they oppose each other. And then the magnetic center of the earth is how this toroidal force of power comes around the whole earth. And so that is how now the enemy is charging himself up with you, the prince of the power of the air. And this is how he brings the Golub, the amunculus, to life. So this is how he brings the Antichrist to life, and he brings the Antichrist to life inside of you. The, the life is in the blood, the soul is in the blood. Yah occupies your third eye pineal gland, so that's the brain, right? That's the functioning of the body, yeah. so the neurological issues. And so you're talking about the heart, you're talking about the mind, and then the spirit. And so this is mm -hmm. like, when, when we were looking at, um, when we're talking about the fact that everybody is has a marker on them and this is what it could be this is why sharon mentioned everyone's tagged with this technology and so once they switch it on then the chip is what gives access full access to that third eye and that spirit we talked about this zachariah because remember yah yah gave me that word about it because your mom had just been vaxxed he was like we were like no it's a trifecta remember yah gave us that rhema word that day remember yeah. he did and it's yeah. a trifecta because Satan imitates everything yah does and it's because he has to because yah created the whole matrix so it has to work even if it's working backwards and upside down it's got to work again a, in the same contrary principles as to the same affirmative principles, right? So there's got to yeah. be an element that comes into play. Got to be the third thing, and that's why, like, when they're talking about this, this mark, this, um, it, it's, and it is like, like how they were just mentioning in this article. It is another kind of a plastic thing they're going to apply to your hand or your forehead. Um, so, so I like, and I'm just hoping, but you don't want to be foolish and just run out there and get it because Yah's word doesn't say he protects us from everything. He does say, we'll eat poison and we won't die and those kinds of things, but he doesn't say go and take the mark. He doesn't say go and take the mark because I'll protect you from anything. It says whoever takes the mark, you know, shall be cut off eternally. When we hear of ancient power structures or geostructures, we don't necessarily associate them with what is called Ashtaroth poles. But Ashtaroth poles are discussed all throughout scripture. What Yahuwah says about them is, rather you will tear down their altars and you will break their stone pillars and you will cut off their Ashtaroth poles. But this is what you must do to them. You shall break down their altars and their stone pillars. You shall smash in their Asherah poles. You shall hewn down and you shall burn their idols with fire. He will uproot Israel 
from this good soil that he gave to their ancestors, he will scatter them beyond the Euphrates because they made their Asherah poles provoking the Most High. He also broke into pieces the stone pillars and cut down the Asherah poles and covered their sites with human bones. Now we saw the human bones in that last image with um, annihilation, right, in front of the lighthouse. His mind rejoiced in Yahuwah's ways. Again, he removed the high places and Asherah poles from Judah. So what are these Asherah poles? So the ancient geostructures, the pyramids, were power generators and light generators that bounced off the firmament to electrify the air. And the capstone that was placed on was golden. The golden capstone enabled the power and people were initiated into the satanic rites of three days of death in the pyramid. The Masonic rites required that you die for three days. You die and traverse death in a sacred ritual in the pyramids. And the Ashtoreth pole was the golden capstone of the pyramids. So this golden capstone is Yahusha and Yah, the third element. So what I'm saying is that this is Satan's imitation of it, where he becomes the golden capstone. He becomes the third element. You see, this is like a third eye. It's the all-seeing eye, the iron, right, that you saw there. So that's what that's what the pyramid is all about, and the golden capstone is the Ashtaroth pole. So you see a little power pole there, a little Ashtaroth pole? That's the golden capstone, which becomes the golden element that will be in the chip that will give head over to Satan. The Phoenix by Manly P. Hall, and it, it goes into the description of this ritual which worked in the Great Pyramid. And you know, you just look at this, uh, this looks a little bit uncomfortable uh, just to look at this. But to describe this ritual, and this is called the symbolic crucifixion. And uh, on page 172 and 173, uh, he describes this ritual. And uh, it says this. It says the king's chamber was the scene of the great climax of the initiatory drama. Here crucified upon a St. Andrew's cross, the candidate was suspended like the soul of God upon his cross of the equinoxes and the solstices. After the solar crucifixion had been performed, the candidate was laid in the great stone coffin, and for three days his spirit, freed from his mortal coil, wandered at the gateways of eternity. His car, as a bird, flew through the spiritual spheres of space. And this was literally a three-day-long out-of-the-body experience. And out-of-the-body experience is something that many people that have undergone trauma or been involved in the occult, you have them. And a lot of times, once a person has them, it's easy to be repeated and people even know how to initiate the process. This is very, very dangerous. The OBEs are a reality, but they're very, very dangerous and obviously they can cost you tremendous spiritual and physical harm. Uh, it goes on to say, at the end of three days, he returned to himself again, and having thus personally and actually experienced the great mystery, he was indeed an initiate, one who beheld and one to whom religion had fulfilled her duty by bringing him into the light of God. So this three-day out-of-the-body experience this was an initiation into the training exercise of what this person would take even further after he had died. This was like a Luciferian boot camp. In Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 14, the devil reads the Bible. You know, the devil reads the Bible and he knows this stuff. You know, believers very few believers know as much about the Bible as the devil does. So uh, we should need to catch up a little bit. But in Isaiah 26, 14, they are dead. Rephaim in the Hebrew. 
They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to vigil in the king's chamber. And it is a drawing of the person that is getting ready to be mummified and it shows, and here it looks like just the three-day ritual, and it shows the spirit coming out of the body, which they call the ka. But look at this picture very carefully and ask yourself, what's wrong with this picture? And a lot's wrong with it, obviously, but look at the soul of this individual. It is not purely human. It is part man, it is part beast, and it's just a chimera creature. It's got the face of a man, the body of a bird, and who knows what all. And this is what Satan knows. Since a human soul will go either to heaven or hell upon death, what if they corrupt this soul? What if they corrupt this soul to where it's not human, to where it will not have part in the resurrection? And what if after this soul passed from this body, what if, through black magic, they could control this soul after death? This is what we're talking about. We're talking about the zombie apocalypse, which is going to intentionally be brought about through the working of black magic and also through the working of science falsely so-called. Now, Revelation chapter 9, verse 6. I believe at this point that uh, this scripture comes into play. There's a lot of uh, things in this scripture. Revelation 9, 6 says, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Corinthians 16, 19 says, Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you are not your own. The ancient Sanskrit term chakra refers to energy centers in the human body. Pyramid functioned as a power plant. Just like the human body is a power plant. So when you see the abomination of desolation seated in the temple, flee to the mountains, leave your house. The pyramid itself, according to the ancient Egyptians, functioned as an ascension device. So everything that we discover about the Great Pyramid has to be related to its original function as a portal to other star systems or other dimensions. Is it possible that the Great Pyramid was designed by otherworldly visitors to function as some kind of portal? They do shine a light on your forehead to check your, check your temperature to do anything. And they do have you take the injection, the jab, on your right arm. But I still believe there may be one more element needed. I'm just hoping anyway for those who did take it. So it would have to be a tri trifecta of things. According to Revelation 15 and 16. So that's a trifecta, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. And of course the 5G or the atmosphere is the Ruach. The messenger RNA is the messenger Yahusha. And then the chip or the third eye would be Yahuwah. Just like Dr. Sebi says, because the body is electric, we are electrified and we become the conduit for ascension for these spirits to come into us. Much in the same way that these giant ancient structures generated a signal. These held the Ashtarach poles, the electrical cross or symbol on the very top that electrified the Shemaim and the air and then cap captivated the, water, the energy in the water. So the Egyptians, the Hebrews, the Ishmaelites, the Edomites brought this this technology to the Europeans. So this is how the Prince of the Power of the Air harnessed energy through these crosses, asteroid poles on top of these buildings, and ruled in the earth and harvested the power into the deep, into the water. And this is how the earth was ensnared or held in bondage and people were also. King Solomon is so celebrated by the Masons because he married so many different women from different nations and this allowed that spirit to take over uh, 
um, the pyramid. So the pyramid that was in what we call Egypt, that was actually Israel. As I've said in my other videos, and I'm going to go into it again, Atlantis, Egypt was at the gates of Gibraltar and fell into the sea. That area was called the Riyadh structure down towards Mauritania. That was the Riyadh Sea that Israel crossed. So the pyramids were, were where that signal was sent off and these building structures are also those, those kinds of buildings where the signal was sent off. These are lighthouses, just like you see lighthouses everywhere. That's where they're sent off. That's why in the movie um, Annihilation, she is a lighthouse that now gets taken over by the dark body. The dark star is the foundation, the fallen angel's dark star. And so that is what the graphene technology is doing. It is that dark body, that black light made of matter and that's why they say black life matters and so these dark lives take form they become matter and that's why there's always the shedding of blood for a black lives matter march or protest because the blood's been shed for the spirit to enter in to enter in and take over jacob or whomever to destroy the two Aleph trees, the two witnesses, and take over the great light that is Yahusha and replace him with the dark matter, the prince of darkness, the Antichrist. I need to know what's inside. I could save him. So whatever has happened with all of the sacrifice and abuse of children and adrenochrome, and for those who are his children, all of these disasters and things point to the fact that he is soon to return. Amen. <laughs> We are put to all your vehicle. We are new to me, Sonia, to me, Fanyaka. Arise of you, O Yahweh. Let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate thee flee from before thee. Let all of Yashara, Yisrael, who love, worship, and praise Yahweh, give him thanks by saying hallelujah.